while, but I am now back with a cool new video on Python 10, version 3.10. This is a cool new feature called the match statement. Python calls it um, structural pattern matching. So this is the match statement, and it's very similar in uh, C, Java, and JavaScript. They have the switch statement, and then different cases. This is essentially the same thing. It works a little bit differently, and um, I'll walk you through a series of seven examples, and you'll understand very well how switch slash match statements work in Python. So this is a nice new feature only existing in Python version 10. So it's new in Python 10. So I have a new installation here of Python 10 running in this Jupyter Notebook. And as you can see, we import sys, this is version, we got 3.10 running. And as usual, I'll post all this code on my GitHub site. I'll post a link down below so you can see the, um, the code if you want to download it. So in our first example here, we have a variable equal to three, and then we have a series of integers that we're going to choose, uh, that we're going to match it up against. So we're going to match var, and then inside of this um, colon, we have indented cases, right? Case one, and this one is an integer, so it's going to try and match against what the value of var is. The value of var is three. We set it equal to three here. So it's only going to match when it gets down here, case three. So it compares this three to the value of var. It finds a match here, and then it's gonna print out large. So let's run that and we'll see what happens. So we get large. So that's a typical integer implementation. I think that's probably one of the most common, either integer or strings. So the second example, we have floating point values. And when we run the second example, we set var equal to 1.5, and we're looking for a match against 1.5. Again, we find that it's, it matches in the third case, which is large. It prints out large. But you can use floating point values. I don't think Java and C allow you to use floating point values in their switch statements. Python does. So you can use any sequence type. Um, you can use integers, floating point values, and strings. And you can also use Python objects. I'll show you examples of each of those in a minute. So there's an example, though, using integers and floating points. Let's look at the next example. Now, in this example, we used a tuple. We set var equal to a tuple that contains two integers, 8 and 0. So we set a match statement uh, to var. And then we have three different cases. So you'll notice something different here. Um, we matched case number one. It's going to compare the value of var, which is this tuple, to this uh, tuple that we have here in the, in the case statement. So zero and then anything, or anything and then zero, or anything and then anything. So those are the three uh, cases that we have. So it's not going to match on zero anything, right? Um, and when you put a variable here for the second value in the tuple, it's basically just going to accept this and assign that to x. And it doesn't care what it is, but yes, it will, it will approve the match. But since 8 does not equal 0, case 1 fails. Case 2, let's see, it's going to assign 8 to the x. So x is now equal to 8. 0 compared to 0, that does match. So guess what? The second case, it found a match and x is equal to 8 in this case. So if we wanted to use that value of x or the 8 inside of this operation, we could use that if we wanted. All we did was do a print statement. So it never gets down to this. So another nice feature you'll notice of these um, switch statements in Python, you do not need to put um, a break statement at the end of your, your case uh, clause. It'll automatically break. Python will automatically break. It'll execute everything that's indented in that case, and then when it's done, it terminates the match operation, and it's going to skip the rest of the cases. So no need for a break statement at the end. Let's look at our next example. Now in this example, we have a string, well, a single letter. So var is equal to an uppercase S. And let's run that. So the result is small. Why is it small? Well, let's see, var equals an uppercase S, and in our first case, we have an uppercase S, so it matches that and it prints out small, and then it automatically breaks, like I said, so it's not even gonna do the comparisons for these next cases, it just skips those. 
So strings work just as well as integers and floating point values and tuples. Let's look at our next example. Now, something's a little different in this example. We have uh, back to an integer value, var is four. Our cases are only one and two. So four is not gonna match either one of those. Let's run this and see what we get. Well, it prints out large. Why does it print out large? Well, the underscore is actually used in match statements as a default case. So underscore will match on anything. So if all the other previous cases didn't match and it gets down to this case of underscore, then it's going to test true, it matches, and it will execute what's inside of the underscore case. That's a default case, so it's always gonna execute if it gets down to that. So here it prints out large. Python also lets you use or statements in the cases. So here we have a case of two or three. It uses a vertical bar to separate the cases. And you could just as well have strings here, right, um, separated by the bar. But each string would need to be enclosed in parentheses. So four or five or six, it will print medium. And then there's a default case where it will print large. So let's run this one, and since it's two, we should expect it to print out small, right? It's gonna hit on the very first test. So yeah, we get small. But this, this vertical bar lets you uh, include or statements in your cases. Now you may also want to include some if statements so that you can have a range of values, not just an or, but a range of values using greater than or equal to inequalities in your cases. And the way to do that is less obvious than you might think. So you, you can't say, here our match variable is score, right? We have a function where we're passing in a score as our variable. We match against the score, that's our match variable. And you can't just say case score greater than 90. This is not going to work. That's going to give you an error. What you have to do is case score if score greater than or equal to 90. So that's how it works. You have to write it like that. So the if is going to go after the variable and then your inequality here after the if. The whole inequality comes after the if statement. So after the case statement, you have to have your case variable followed by your if clause with the inequality. And here um, it will match, it will print out the very first one that matches. So if you got a 100, it's not going to print all of these because remember, we have a break statement that's kind of implicit at the end of each case. So if, if you got a 100, it's going to match A, it'll print A, and then it'll stop. It'll break automatically. So when we run this at 94, it should just print out A, and at 48, it should skip through all of these and reach the default case, which is F. So let's run this and see how that works. So the first one is A, and the second one is F. So it is not hard to include inequalities in your case statement as long as you use the proper syntax. And our last example is a Python object. So here we created a t-shirt class. We have a constructor, a very simple constructor that just takes a, a variable s for size and it assigns that to self.size. So the t-shirt um, instance variable size will contain the size of shirt. And it looks like instead of using size one, two, or three, we use size S, M, or L. But we don't know if people are gonna put S, M, or L, or they're gonna put S, M, Mead, or L, G. We could add more on there too, just the whole word small, or the whole word medium, we could, we could add on as many as we want. But we have cases with an or for each one of these options. And then like I said, we could, we could extend out as many options as we want. We could also even add a one in here. So it would catch a one, an S, a small, a SM, all of those, and it would print small for, for any of them, just by adding ors. And also it's important to note that when we have strings, we include this one, enclose it inside parentheses, and then the bar, and then open and close parentheses for the second string. So that is how our string option works. This is an object. Uh, and note also for the object, to get the instance variable size, look how we called this. So we created a shirt, shirt1 equals t-shirt medium to our constructor. So medium is s, right? And it assigns that med, m-e-d, string to the instance variable size. And then it calls shirt1.order. So shirt1 is calling the order method 
of the t-shirt class. So it doesn't need to pass any variable there because it already has an instance variable called size. Every t-shirt does. Okay, so when we, um, when we call the order function, there's a t-shirt that called it. And what we're using as a match variable is that t-shirts dot size instance variable. We access that instant variable using the dot operator. Self dot size gives us access to this instance variable for each t-shirt. So in shirt one calls shirt one dot order, we access shirt one size using self dot size. And the first shirt is medium, so we should get um, a match right here. And it should print out medium. And in the second one, the t-shirt size is XL. And when we call shirt2.order, we call this function again. And uh, guess what? There's no match. There's no match for XL. It's going to get down here to this bottom case. We could have put case underscore where it would always match as a default case. But I wanted to use this XL string in this printout statement that we have here. So we used case X where we could assign that to a variable, the size. So X now contains XL, this string. So when we print out um, a little message here, format size XL, is not recognized. So let's just run this so you can see how it works. Size XL is not rec recognized. This is just a print format statement in Python, so don't be thrown by it. Curly braces lets us throw a variable. In this case, the variable is this string XL. Is not recognized. And then it prints that out and it sticks the variable in there. So that's a kind of cool way of using uh, case statements. That wraps up this video on Python's new structural pattern matching in Python 10, the match and case statements. I plan to come out with a new series of videos in the very near future, um, mostly probably focused on uh, machine learning. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.